Okay, I think we're uh, just about ready to get our readouts here. So uh, I can give you 30 seconds if you need it, so your note taker feels that they've got, they will well represent your table. And then we'll just go in reverse order of the tables. Uh, so we'll start with table seven. What I need you to do is uh, come to the front of the room, whoever uh, is speaking or representing your table, and uh, you can take this mic and uh, just speak into it normally. We have somebody over here who's doing this fantastic job recording us, so just uh, give them your name and uh, just your summary. Okay. Hi, my name is Barbara Coakley. I'm on the board of Genealogy Friends of Plano Libraries, um, and our group talked about the closed Facebook group um, one of the members at the, one of, at the table has had a lot of success. Um, they welcome the, whoever joins the group. It's a closed group. They join the group, and then they welcome them and ask them to tell about their ancestors, and that stimulates a lot of discussion, and they have a really successful group. Um, then the members contribute, uh, and they plug membership for their society in that group as well, and they've gotten some members that way. Um, there's uh, also a cemetery database, but it's a database you can contribute to. So they link to pictures, um, and they have more information than just like name, birth date, death date in there. So there's more research information in there as well. Um, we everybody at the table agreed that finding and retaining members was an issue for us, um, and the virtual meeting idea seems to be something that everybody was interested in. Um, one member at the table said that um, she's an instructor at a local college, and they use a platform called Zoom.us. And um, so she was going to look into potentially trying to use that for remote sessions and recording and posting those on YouTube. Um, somebody else had some interviews with older members of their society for the area, and they digitized those and posted them on YouTube. So they have a YouTube channel. Um, and then we talked about um, trying to get involved with some of the Boy Scouts. Um, one of the people at the table had, they worked with an Eagle Scout on a project. So trying to, in, to work on genealogy badges to try and bring, bring some younger members in. Um, hopefully they can help us with the social media stuff. Thank you very much. That's it. Okay, table six. Just tell us your name and your society, please. Hello, I'm Sheila Hallmark, and I'm with the East Texas Genealogical Society out of the Tyler area. We serve as six counties in our area. Um, we had a good discussion at our group. I think a lot of us said that we are doing a lot of the things that the panel members had said that they're doing, uh, and uh, uh, various items that we're doing, yet we're still having problems um, generating new members as our old members fall away or move or, or die or something. We're not bringing in new members. So that was a big thing about how do we go about pulling in new members. Some of the things that spoke to us that was um, that it seems to be the, the new thing, of course, is social media. And several of us have uh, Facebook pages, and so we saw the need, and I know our own organization has recently seen the need to do more with that. Uh, and so it went from being, oh, something we have to have, to we're now seeing the importance of really doing something with it. So that was one thing. Uh, so the other thing that um, really spoke to a couple of our hearts was the comments about focusing on your customers, your members. You know, how do we do that? They're joining, and are we just leaving them? Uh, but the some and letting them flounder, uh, maybe uh, doing the mentoring or having a buddy, somebody that's in our, our organization that we develop a buddy system that kind of uh, uh, steps in with them from the get-go and uh, so do that. Um, uh, working with universities, mentoring, uh, but the social media was a big thing. Uh, customer, you know, focusing on our customers and uh, going after new members. I think we would like to know more about that. How do we actually go about and generate the new members, the younger generation, when they're so busy and they're caught up in their lives with their children and everything else. So uh, we enjoyed it. Thank you, panel. Thank you. Okay, can we hear from uh, table five? I'm Debbie Pearson. I'm from Fort Worth Genealogical Society. And we had some good discussions. Um, one of the challenges 
uh, that was mentioned, and we didn't really get to talk about this much, was um, as was mentioned up at the panel, uh, mentoring, um, and that that is a, a challenge that's hard to do. And we did discuss a little bit about the at the very end about the um, uh, having the the night or the meeting uh, before the meeting where you could maybe help some people. And I know our society dabbled with that a little bit. That's something we need to revisit. Uh, another challenge is trying to advertise. And we were talking about um, how someone mentioned that they had AM radio stations and, and a bunch of newspapers. And we were saying that the rural counties and the smaller counties, that's, um, that's sometimes easier. But even uh, Cedar Hill, was they were saying that you know their newspaper died. There, there are no more newspapers. And we were talking about the dearth and the death of newspapers. So we brainstormed some ideas. And we were talking about how, um, well, like in the city of Fort Worth, the um, City of Fort Worth helps organize uh, the neighborhood associations all around the city, and the neighborhoods are really trying to stick together and identify themselves as who they are, and so a lot of them have their own Facebook page or uh, an internal newsletter kind of system, and uh, we, so we've talked about maybe advertising just in the neighborhoods. You can kind of pinpoint what neighborhoods you'd really like to invite to your meetings. Uh, homeowners associations, <coughs> some of the gated communities, they have an internal uh, newsletter situ uh, situation. We talked about trying to get some little ads or some little notices put in some of those. Um, co um, retirement communities. Some of the really nice retirement communities have real nice internal newsletters that go just, just to the people. Some of those people are still active, still drive. Uh, I know our society uh, was using a really nice one, Trinity Terrace in Fort Worth um, for several years for our seminar, and they promised to advertise, and we did get a few participants at our seminar simply because we were in their facility. So that's another place to look to maybe put some some advertisements or get some news out. Um, and like I said, the uh, next door, is, are you familiar with that face, uh, or that, you know, that people put in there about lost pets and suspicious man in the neighborhood or whatever, but you know, that, that, that <laughs> might be a good place to advertise um, so for about your, your club or your group. Um, another challenge we talked about was getting new members and the young people. I know that was talked about in, in previous years, and we had the same idea about the girls, the Girl Scouts or the Boy Scouts. And uh, I know one time we did have a Boy Scout come and talk about his project. We even had them post the colors that night, which we don't normally do at a meeting, but um, we let them do it that night because it was kind of a helpful situation for them. They get points or they, you know, that goes in their reports that they got to post the colors. And then the little boy talked about his project, which I think his grandmother had really done his work for him. But, <laughs> but anyway, he did talk about it. But y uh, we also, someone mentioned, you know, hey, why don't we volunteer? Uh, someone go speak to uh, a Boy Scout group and then you might <coughs> talk about beginning gen genealogy with them and then that might bring them back in as members, um, or maybe even their parents. Um, <coughs> we also talked about uh, some of the junior colleges or the local colleges uh, trying to partner up with a history teacher and see if um, you know the class could volunteer to get some extra credit. They, um, a another project um, with the Boy Scouts, Girl Scouts, Explorer Troops, whoever, or with maybe some of these junior college groups, um, get them to go out and they've all got phones, they could certainly help you with your digitization of your tombstones project that, you know, they'd be, you could get a whole troop of them out there one day in a cemetery, the work would go a lot faster. Uh, also, um, we have a person who was uh, at our table who works with the LDS church, and the, you kind of have a built-in audience there for young people, um, so that might be another place to go. You could volunteer to speak with them, and they have... Um, sponsored some writing contests sometime, write about your ancestor or something. So that's another way to get young people maybe involved and interested and go through the LDS church. Um, so one mentioned that they would even give away uh, a membership to the winner of some contest, you know, writing or whatever, give away a membership for the year. So just trying to think of ways to get new people. Thanks. There's table four. Hi, I'm Carlene Johnson, and I'm from the Fort Worth Genealogical Society. Um, one of the things that we had looked at was meetings not held every month or, you know, due to summer vacations, like Dallas doesn't hold it in the 
summer months, and another one doesn't, you know, may not hold it in the winter months due to people not able to be out after dark. Um, one suggestion was to have a carpool for those that um, can't make it during the winter months because it gets dark too early. Um, another thing uh, that we talked about was reaching the beginners. Um, if we reach the beginners, then we, you know, can help them and maybe get them to join the society. But another thing is, is the advanced genealogist that have um, uh, that have the knowledge and may not be able, may not come to your meetings because it's not advanced enough. So you have to look at those genealogists as well. Um, then another thing was advanced study groups to help with those that may want certification. Um, helping with those people that want to go on and get their certification could help bring in certified genealogists that could help with your society. Um, the one thing on the reaching the beginners is I do a beginners class with the Fort Worth Genealogical Society. Um, and we have reached people through that who have joined our society through this beginner's genealogy. And I think it is a good way to reach people. And I love to teach it. It's, it's just a lot of fun to see the excitement in their eyes. So, um, but I think that's uh, technology, um, reaching people through, young people through technology. I know my children are on their phones or on their tablets, even my grandchildren constantly. So um, that's one way you can reach them is through that. And I've also seen on the websites um, or on a website that keeping your website up to date so that it interests people would also help. So. Thank you. Okay. Can you ask how many sessions do you have? We go January through. We go January through August. It's like eight months, yeah. On a weekly basis? No, it's once a month. Okay. Yes, once a month. All right, table three. Hi, my name is Jim Thornhill. I'm with the Dallas Genealogical Society. Um, one of our big takeaways was organization in your society, that your society has to be organized and have a structure. The one big example we gave is if your president can't put his hands on a copy of the bylaws very quickly, then you have a problem. Um, we like the idea of having a president-elect, having someone that comes to the board meeting that's with a view of taking that office over to getting used to doing that. We thought it was very important for to get new members in is to get for the society to be involved in the community. I know there's a tendency, at least uh, of a lot of small societies, just to have our little, come have our little presentation once a month and then everybody goes home and that's it till the next month. But you have to be able to get involved and get out into the community if you want your society to grow. We thought it was important that the leadership be optimistic about the society and trying to move things forward. We um, thought the social media, although it can be intimidating, was the way of the future and the way to reach people, but at the same time that we need to be understanding of those people who want nothing to do with social media and not ostracize them or try to eliminate them, but try to include them as well, but not let them hold us back to make sure that we're moving forward with that. Um, and face-to-face -face and one-on-one -on -one communication can be very important, especially with volunteers. And I want to tell a little story about our society. Um, I've not been doing the vice president job for very long, but I had noticed a trend when I first started that as far as volunteers going with, for the events, it seemed like it, right up until immediately before the event, there wasn't anybody volunteering. And as the person who was running the event, that made me real, real nervous. <laughs> But Patty, has start, who is our volunteer coordinator, has started calling people and, and talking to them individually. And all of a sudden, now we've got tons of volunteers. So it makes a huge difference to contact those people and speak with them on the phone. And I know it's time consuming, and I know we're all busy, but it works. So thank you. Thank you. All right, table number two. Oh, you got some applause. Good morning, everyone. I'm Patty Huff-Smith, and I'm from the Dallas Genealogical Society. I had an awesome group. It was a lot of fun being able to visit with them. 
so many things that have already been shared were shared in our group as well. Oh, I love one of the things that Debbie had mentioned. She's from the Bosque uh, Genealogical Society. They have actually created an outreach committee in Bosque County, and that is awesome to be able to reach out to uh, get new uh, members. One of the other things that Debbie had mentioned was uh, when she joined the Genealogical Society, that she got an email with the bylaws and uh, what surnames is she? Uh, oh, Erath. Okay, thank you for um, for correcting that because she's with several different societies. Um, but uh, and the welcome letter, you know, that that just made her feel very special. And I think any way that we can make people feel important, make them feel special. Um, that they are um, a valued member and uh, when they come and visit, make them feel warm and welcome. Anything that we can do in that regard. Um, Tara mentioned about narrowing our focus and so I know one of our panelists had mentioned that and that is an excellent um, suggestion as well. We talked a lot about mentorship and the mentorship idea um, is, is that is really about relationship. So when we mentor people, when we embrace people when they come, it is really showing them that we care, that we value them, and um, be interested. Be interested in what they're researching and what they're doing. Um, another thing we talked about, love the restaurant idea, because I'm all about socializing, and that was um, a lot of fun. And here, since I'm in Dallas, <laughs> Um, we talked about having several different locations. Maybe we do a North Dallas um, restaurant meeting or um, East Dallas or West Dallas and, uh, you know, just trying to get more uh, involvement in uh, the community. And then um, um, Kitty had talked about, get, you know, opportunities to get to know each other. What can we do to, to promote getting to know each other in our um, communities. And uh, then also we talked a lot about retirement committees. I've got a cousin that lives up in uh, Addison. And she said, oh, I don't want to go all the way down to Dallas. I said, I'll pick you up. You know, I'll go out of my way to help somebody else so that I can bring them here. She came. She loved it. She was part of a DNA committee down in Georgetown. So I got her, I pulled her aside and said, oh, they have a question about family tree maker. Can you help? Oh, yeah. So she pulled up. It was her first time here. So she pulled up. So recognizing people's strengths, recognizing people's gifting, and being able to draw them into your community and into your, your community of genealogist and your society is really really helpful sometimes the only thing people need is an invitation so if we can invite people they feel included they feel special and um, and that uh, that is going a long way for me in making the phone calls for our volunteers in my position it's like emails were not working I had one person out of hundreds of emails that emailed me back and I said seriously I'm thinking but the phone calls let me tell you I've had so many wonderful conversations with people and um, and I see people coming and it has been it's been a, a real uh, a real interesting and exciting um, opportunity I'm thinking if I've left out anything oh one thing I do want to mention we did not discuss this at my table but because we talked about getting young people involved several months ago the Jack and Jill organization it's a mentorship program for young boys and girls ages 10 to 12 and the Dallas Genealogical Society hosted that program here at the um, library and we had about 30 children their parents came and um, and then we actually did a program for the children and that was super exciting and they want us to do it now for their national program so um, that has been very um, profitable exciting and fun let's okay so we have to hear from table number one now all right your table one Um, Dickie Dixon with the Angelin County Genealogical Society. Um, 
we brought up the idea of using GenWeb to replace RootsWeb. Um, some societies had relied on that to piggyback their organization on for those who don't have an independent website. Uh, also, one of our members brought up that uh, GenWeb is not being used as much as it could be. There's much valuable information there about a county that could be uh, really valuable to um, someone doing genealogy. One of our members brought up, table members brought up that is there a use counter there for GenWeb? Uh, some of them post um, obituaries on their page on GenWeb. Uh, one of our members brought up the marginality of obtaining members from special projects. Um, it's, but you know, those add up as you get one from this and one from that. Um, contacts for each county are located on GenWeb. Uh, and I brought up that use, we can use programs to just get the word out about our genealogical society. And as you know, if you've been in business, your business at any one time is the sum total of all the advertising that you've ever done. Um, and um, I brought up that we use a lot of panel discussions of topics in our uh, genealogical society for programs, and that that gives us a broad-based uh, input and participation from the community. Thanks. Whoops. I appreciate everybody who volunteered. Yeah, do you have a question? Um, when we were talking in our church, we had good discussions, but I brought up something that was a discredit to myself, and that was I came last year, and, and several of us enjoyed it. We got some good ideas. We were enthusiastic, and then we went home, and what happened? It just kind of fizzled out, you know. So maybe we need to look at, at our organization and putting together a little core group or something that tries to keep that momentum going and getting our uh, board and members involved. And the other thing is we here need to stay in contact with each other and encourage each other and keep going instead of it just fizzling away. Maybe the idea of having uh, <clears throat> dinners, lunches around the area for society leaders might uh, be a lovely thing to do uh, as well. So we'll capture that idea. So we are uh, have to eat now. Uh, oh, you had something to Please. Are there any ideas for a curriculum for beginner's courses in genealogy? Are there any ideas for a curriculum for beginner's courses in genealogy? I'll tell you that there are the other. Well, I, I, I could speak to that, but I can let somebody else speak to that. Uh, Give me your uh, email, and I'll send you what I have. You can. You can go to the Dallas Genealogical Society. We have a whole curriculum up there as well. We probably have two or three. And you can also go to... Uh, Fort Worth Genealogical Society on our website has Carlene's uh, curriculum uh, for, for the uh, beginner's class. Well, it's just the outline. It, I mean, it's not the curriculum. It's just the, the eight sessions. Right. It describes them. And the, the uh, website is www.tx fwgs.org. I'm going to jump out on a limb here and hope I can get board approval for saying this. <laughs> but we're, we're in the process of working on a speakers bureau at the Dallas Geological Society. And we're going to have a PowerPoint presentation that will be on our, our will be available. And it's going to have copious notes with it. Um, the goal is for anybody who doesn't mind getting up in front of a group and speaking to be able to get that PowerPoint and just use that. It, you don't want to do any preparation or any notes or learn anything new. It'll just be all there for them. Um, and if the board approves, we may be able to share that with other. Uh, societies. Of course, it will have a DGS logo on it, so you'll have to deal with that. One, one thing I will say, too, is that uh, some years ago, three years ago, we uh, did a beginner's uh, set of four sessions here at the Dallas Public Library. There, the, the society used to do beginning sessions all the time, and that was one of the things that fell off. So uh, we did that, and uh, we came with all of our, uh, those of us who are doing it, uh, European family uh, examples. 
And uh, it turned out that we had uh, an entire audience, with the exception of two people, uh, who were people of color. And uh, we're a public library. We're in a city. We're in a big city. So one of the things I did was create a case study um, on an African-American slave who became a justice of the peace during Reconstruction and then became a, a member of the state representatives of the state of Arkansas and used um, an African-American case study, an example, uh, to realize that our new members, especially in this area, are, are going to be of people of color. So then I, I found a Hispanic uh, case study to develop. And so I would just say uh, that sometimes it's like, who do you want to recruit? And uh, I've had d different, uh, different experiences with uh, standing up in front of an audience and the entire audience cannot relate to my examples. And then so now what I, c I do is I, when, I, when I give it, I look at who's in the audience and I, I pull up different examples so that I can relate to them better. Yeah, uh, so one more and then we have to get to lunch. So. Um, well, it, with the accountability to keep on track for next year, would Barb and John Wiley share their restaurant who their 10 percenter people are? <laughs> Is it like the PTAs? The, like no, we just go, we go to restaurants in Grand Prairie and uh, we we had a uh, president who was a retired teacher, and she was the coordinator for an elementary school when she was a teacher, so she had the contacts of the local restaurants. Yeah. Know, uh, so yeah. so go, to your, go to your school district and just ask them, what restaurants do this? Okay, so, all right, so now what we're going to do, I just have a couple of uh, notes. Should have taken off my screensaver. Um, about lunch. Lunch uh, will be eaten in this room. Uh, it is available outside of the doors. There's tea and uh, lemonade out there and water in the back. And we have two choices of food. Uh, we have, uh, they're all box lunches. So uh, the first one is, I am going to get there in a second, get left-handed here. Uh, we have turkey and Havarti on nine grain. Uh, and then there's salads and fruit and a cookie in the box, usual stuff. And then we have ham and Swiss on rye. Uh, we do have three vegetarian um, lunches. Anybody here need one of those? I want to make sure that they don't just get taken if somebody actually wants or needs them. Now we're all carnivores. OK. <laughs> and uh, the other thing is, is that we had asked for a $10 donation to defray the cost. So if you've turned your money in, thanks very much. If you're uh, able to do that and haven't, please do. And. Um, you can, I, are you raising your hand to take money? Is that what you're doing? Oh, okay. <laughs> and we'll, uh, at 12.45, we'll uh, start again. Thanks very much. It's been a great morning.